Now we're going to be looking at flow simulation today, specifically how we can you know, evaluate our performance. Uh, like Alon said, uh, my name is Drew. I am based out of the Philadelphia office. So I am uh, one of the simulation specialists on the team. Anything that's related to CFD, FEA, injection molding, I, I touch. Um, I've been in the analysis space for about 15 years, um, number of years in industry for both biomedical and uh, energy before jumping in the reseller space and i've used a lot of different tools so um, our agenda for today is we'll we'll look at what exactly is flow simulation i know some of you've mentioned you've utilized it some of you have not so we'll kind of give a, a little bit of an overview of what flow simulation is uh, then we'll actually jump into the software we'll look at a pretty interesting example so you sort of see a garden hose um, and we'll get into that and then lastly we'll close it out with any questions you guys may have so what exactly is flow simulation? So flow simulation um, really is the SOLIDWORKS naming for it, but uh, it, it's really a way of virtualizing what happens to the fluid. So SOLIDWORKS flow simulation utilizes the computational fluid dynamics approach. So uh, the computational fluid dynamics approach, very similar to FEA is a numerical approach. It was obviously derived off Navier and Stokes off of Newton's second law, really just to equate um, Newton's second law to fluid motion. So being able to calculate velocity, pressure, temperature, and density, um, very imperative. And obviously from that, you can sort of derive a lot of other fluid parameters. So um, it, as you can imagine, it's very advantageous for engineers designing, you know, designing products that relate to flow of fluids, heat transfer, and forces on solids. You know, um, CFD has been around for a long time. You know, I'm, I'm not that old, but you know, my first job, um, I remember going over reports of punch card decks for, for nuclear plants um, in the 80s. So, you know, engineers have been utilizing CFD for a long time. With the advent of technology, it's gotten a lot better in terms of integrated CFD solutions. You sort of see this picture at the lower right, pretty cool example. This was actually taken from the NASA Columbia spacecraft vehicle, the, the last spacecraft, and they were actually utilizing CFD. So kind of a, vis a visualization of all sort of the numerical method. What exactly is CFD? Well, CFD is a way of being able to run a simulation on, on a fluid, in this case, air interacting with a landing gear system. So obviously there's wind tunnel tests and you can sort of work your way through that. But one of the challenges of wind tunnel testing is one, um, they're very expensive to build. It's also very costly to run tests, you know, just from actually running the wind tunnel and then actually being able to visualize the results. With CFD, you can actually deliberately everywhere in the model see what's happening to the fluid. So in this case, this landing gear, you could just sort of see directly where the stagnation is, where the drag and velocity effects. And that's really kind of the game changer around this technology is you're actually able to visualize what's happening to the fluid. So the advantage of using SOLIDWORKS flow simulation is it can result in fewer iterations in the design cycle. So you can imagine if a wind tunnel, you actually have to have either a scale replica built of the prototype, so something that's a lot smaller or actually the full prototype. So you still need to build that prototype. With using SOLIDWORKS Flow, you can actually do those iter iterations as you're actually designing the part. So you design the part in SOLIDWORKS and you jump right over into flow simulation and make those iterations. So as a, con you know, as a result of this, you're gonna be able to have shorter lead times and be able to produce fewer prototypes. So great. Let's actually jump into the software, kind of the cool bit of this. So let's jump into this. So I'm based on the East Coast. I'm based in Philly. And up until Memorial Day, we actually had not had any rain. Uh, so my, my lawn was starting to look a little bit. Um, it wasn't quite gr uh, brown yet, but it was getting to that point. So I, as I was sort of feeding my lawn of some water, I was thinking about it'd be pretty cool to actually take a look at a example for CFD. A lot of times when people think about CFD, they think of kind of the example I showed in the slide of a high-end aerospace application. And yes, CFD does a great job of that, but there's a tons of other applications and this is a prime example. So um, we are a garden hose nozzle designer, um, you know, dealing in consumer goods. And what we wanna do is if we wanna design a good product, we actually wanna sort of understand what's happening to our velocity flow stream. So really is our product gonna really deliver what we're after in this? So that's gonna be our, design challenge when we look at this problem. So the first thing I'm gonna point out with SOLIDWORKS Flow um, is we can take advantage of an assembly file. So we're working right here with an assembly file. You can also run in a single body part file or a multi-body part. So whatever file you're utilizing in SOLIDWORKS, you can take advantage of within Flow Simulation. 
The other really cool thing about this is we can take advantage of configuration. So in this case, the exact sort of you know product iterations you guys probably be involved in, you can take advantage of different configurations. So um, let's jump into a project. The first thing I always like to point out whenever I'm talking to customers who are new to CFD or maybe you've touched CFD is kind of the game-changing technology in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, because it's CAD embedded, SOLIDWORKS already does a lot of the legwork in terms of understanding what, where solid bodies are and where cavities are. And why that's important, you know, you guys can probably e easily do a measure tool in SOLIDWORKS and see, all right, I can measure between these edges. SOLIDWORKS is already recognizing where your solid entities are, um, where your cavities are. And why this is really important is when you actually jump into a flow simulation study, the SOLIDWORKS is automatically going to initialize what's known as the fluid domain. The fluid domain in this case is going to be water in this hose. And by doing this automatically, it's going to automatically be able to mesh where your fluid's going to be in your cavity and where your solid cells are going to be. Why this is so important is when you look at other codes, and like I sort of said, I've, I've been using CFD for a long time. A lot of other codes require you writing scripts like open foam or fluent in terms of establishing the fluid domain. And I can remember painfully setting up, you know, studies over, you know, two days of just trying to establish what my fluid cavity is and what my solid bodies are. And SOLIDWORKS, because you're working in the CAD environment, does this automatically. And I think that's one of the really, really cool things about this that it's going to save you time and gives you the ability to run different configurations very quickly. All right. So we kind of know our, our project, our, our design study here, we're, we're looking at injection pressure of water coming into the cavity and exiting. And we want to sort of see how these two different designs uh, function. And let's sort of just take a look at these two different configurations. So you see, sort of see configuration A right here with the valve located right here. And let's go to configuration B. And you sort of see the valve is right up here. So what's going to be the better configuration for maybe a uniform flow, but also our maximum flow? So let's take a look at that. I'm going to hop into configuration A. That's going to be our first configuration we're going to start with. And let's sort of set up our flow simulation project. So flow simulation um, utilizes what's known as a wizard. Maybe some of you may have touched the SOLIDWORKS FEA wizard. To be honest, I I'm not a huge fan of the SOLIDWORKS FEA wizard. I don't use it that much. Maybe you do use it and you like it, and that's great. But what I will say is the SOLIDWORKS flow simulation wizard is really useful. I use it every time I set up a project, and it really gives you the ability to set up projects very easily and um, have good continuity for every single project you set up. So we're going to name this as webinar. This is our first sort of establishment. We're creating the project, what our name of our project is going to be. And then we also see our configuration type right here, where I can specify uh, configuration A or configuration B. And this is the beauty of being able to run CFD right within as you're designing the part. I can take advantage of multiple different types of configurations. So I hit next. I then specify my units, and all these units would be pertinent um, from a fluid parameter perspective. Obviously, you have a base unit line system, but you can also create your own units. One of the common things I see customers do is they work in US units, um, and then, but they might change their heat units from BTUs per hour to watts. That's something I really see a lot of. So you have this flexibility of changing any of these units. You know, you can work in like hybrid units like we're sort of seeing right here in SI, but also US units. So you have that ability to do that. We hit next after we specify our units and we can specify what type of analysis we can run. So, the two different types of analysis types are based around what your fluid domain set up as. So external flow would be um, the ability to actually uh, what a lot of people commonly think of of CFD. You know, air, you know, looking at a Formula One car flow moving across an object. It's external flow moving across an object. Now there is the ability to run heat exchangers, which actually have internal cavities. But you know, the majority of external flow is flow across an object. In our case, we want to consider what's happening to the fluid on the interior, so internal flow. Um, this would you know, cover a lot of different problems. So in our case, we're looking at fluid flow for a garden hose, but maybe you're looking at, um, I don't know, uh, uh, a turbine or a pump, you know, anything where you have fluid on the interior and want to sort of see what's directly happening to the, you know, the fluid that would be internal flow study. 
As far as um, some of these other physical features, these actually specify what type of study you're going to run. In our case, we don't need to define any of these physical features because it's an internal fluid flow problem. But let me talk about these physical features just so you have an understanding of what SOLIDWORKS flow is capable of. So in our case, we're looking at a fluid flow application. Um, I am going to jump into thermal in my, my next webinar on June 16th. So if you're looking at thermal, I encourage you to sign up for that webinar. But I will just sort of point out right here that SOLIDWORKS flow simulation is capable of all thermal analysis, all modes of heat transfer. So natural convection, force convection, uh, radiation, and heat conduction. So a matter of turning these values on is going to activate, you know, running a heat transfer scenario. Um, I mentioned natural convection. The really cool thing about this is we could actually adjust our gravity uh, cont contribution and we can specify these components in various directions. So say I wanted to do two G's in the, in the negative Z direction, I could just type it in and you have that ability. Um, but we're obviously not gonna apply gravity and the reason being is our boundary conditions were already applied with gravity applied, so we don't need to double count gravity. Um, with rotation, um, rotation, this is sort of talking about what I mentioned earlier about pump applications. So if you have any type of blades rotating, you could actually apply rotation in flow simulation. And lastly, this other advanced study here, free surface. Free surface allows you to sort of monitor what happens to a fluid interaction with a gas. Great example of this would be like a tanker, like a tank truck uh, moving down a highway with water in it. And you want to sort of see what happens to that as that fluid as it's sloshing around. So again, um, looking at really the design, um, looking at velocity and pressure distribution for a garden hose nozzle. So we're gonna keep all these unchecked. Hit next, and then it's a matter of specifying our fluid. In our case, this is gonna be water. Um, one of the cool things about, again, flow simulation is how really it's designed to sort of match the SOLIDWORKS CAD interface. And the fact of, when you look at the material interface, how you actually define materials is very similar. If, if any of you have ever defined materials in mechanical SOLIDWORKS CAD, you know, maybe you're using it for the mass properties. Um, you have a, a predefined unit material list in SOLIDWORKS that you can't change, and then you have what's known as a user defined. So in our case, we're running a liquid, which is water. So if you go to water, you see how there's a lock right here? That means it's always gonna be, you know, I can't change these values. And it has the predefined fluid parameters, density, viscosity, specific heat, et cetera. But you'll also see there's a user defined folder. So if I wanted to create my own custom fluid, I have that ability. So the exact same way that SOLIDWORKS mechanical CAD in terms of material data functions, it's the same in flow simulation. Once you create a user defined material, it will always be there unless you delete it, or obviously if you uninstall SOLIDWORKS. So I think that's a really cool thing is just the, the user interaction is very much the same as SOLIDWORKS CAD. So we're specifying water. Um, the other thing to point out is if you're looking at valve applications and really worried about cavitation, we can turn that on. We're not gonna turn on cavitation. If we wanted to, we could, but I'll just sort of have it unchecked. Next would be our wall conditions. So if we wanted to have a heat transfer condition on our wall, so a heat transfer rate applied on our wall, we could apply that. Um, obviously this isn't a heat transfer problem, so we'll just keep it as adiabatic. Um, our roughness would be if this was not a smooth finish, so we wanted something that would impede our velocity, we could key in a roughness factor. Lastly is the initial conditions of fluid. So what the fluid's initially set as, and we'll just say, say it's at set at ambient uh, pressure and temperature. So what you'll see now is you'll see I, my study has been created in the webinar tab. But the really cool thing about this is that um, it creates a small translucent box, which this is known as the computational domain. This kind of points to what I talked about earlier, where SOLIDWORKS is automatically going to recognize where your cavities are in a system. Um, that's kind of the, the really the game changer aspect of SOLIDWORKS is it kind of, you know, this is something that's very tedious to do at OpenFoam or Fluent or other softwares out there. It does this automatically. So let's look at our setup. I've already predefined a couple setups here. Um, let's look at our boundary conditions. So our boundary conditions are really what govern what's happen, happening to the system. Note this attachment of the garden hose, this nozzle, it's, I'm not modeling the hose. So what I did is I just created a small little lid right here where I could apply a boundary condition. And this encapsulates, encapsulates uh, what the garden hose attachment to it. So a matter of just you know, clicking on, right clicking on boundary condition and hitting insert. And I think this is the other really cool thing about this versus some of the other tools out there 
is it's just a matter of clicking on a face. So what you guys are already familiar with with SOLIDWORKS commands, um, and I could right click, I could hit select other, I could use a box selection. So all the commands you guys are familiar with from just SOLIDWORKS mechanical CAD, the same commands are available in SOLIDWORKS flow. Again, this is nice because you're not writing any Python script or doing any scripting, which can be very tedious and, you know, again, it just slows down the setup time, you know, in other CFD codes where SOLIDWORKS, it's all parametric based. I can just click on a face. So I, once I click on that face, I can specify the value. In this case, I'm specifying three atmospheres as my injection pressure. Um, I could change my temperature. Um, but I could also say, maybe I don't want to use an injection pressure. Maybe I want to use an inlet mass flow, maybe an inlet volume flow. Um, a lot of customers I see use GPM, you know, a very common thing for, you know, uh, any type of fluid flow problem, you have that ability, as well as an inlet velocity. Um, I can change whether or not it's coming in at, at normal to face, or maybe it's swirling with an angular velocity. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you define these boundary conditions, as well as specifying if it's at the outlet as well. But again, I'm just going to say an injection pressure, and that's what I'm going to use for my inlet condition. You can imagine as the water exits the actual nozzle right here, so let me just sort of zoom out, um, it's going to be exposed to the ambient pressure and ambient environment. So at the exit, I just have ambient pressure being applied. Great. So at this point, I've now set up the problem. Um, I just want to point out one final thing before we start taking a look at the results is the meshing. So once you set up your boundary conditions in the system, you can specify your mesh settings. So SOLIDWORKS already initialized where, where fluid cells and solid cells are going to be. That was the whole purpose of me showing you the fluid domain. So everything in that blue that I showed earlier would be meshed as a fluid cell. Everything else is just your SOLIDWORKS parts is going to be meshed as a solid cell. Again, speaking to the ease of SOLIDWORKS is there's an automatic measure, meaning how much cells are going to be. You know, SOLIDWORKS has a, a built-in algorithm that's going to automatically size the system based around the geometry and the cavity. So if I start with a level one, that's going to be the coarsest mesh up to a level seven, that could be very fine. I do get questions every now and then from customers who maybe have utilized CFD in the past and asking, well, hey, I want to actually get pretty granular. I want to refine my mesh at certain regions to be finer. Yeah, you can still do that. SOLIDWORKS has that capability where you can define a manual mesh and specify these refinement with all the parameters that you'd be interested in in terms of refinement. And I'm doing this on the global scale, but the, you know, I can also go locally, meaning that if I wanted to refine my mesh to be finer, um, you know, add a particular component, an edge, a vertice, again, all the SOLIDWORKS commands that you have available, you could do that. But one of the cool things about this is I can also specify a region. So I could specify a combination of faces and edges by just sort of adjusting this green box. I could also change the shape. Maybe I don't want to use a, a cuboid. I could use a cylinder um, and make those changes accordingly. So you have that ability to sort of, you know, apply those boundary conditions. So let me just hop back into PowerPoint. I just want to summarize a couple things on the setup before we take a look at the views. So some of the really the, the huge setup advantages of flow simulation are first, you know, SOLIDWORKS flow simulation automatically creates the fluid domain for an easy to mesh system. So you sort of see right here how we're establishing the fluid, it does this automatically for every type of study. So we're running a fluid flow study, but it does the same exact thing for a heat transfer study. And again, when you look at this in comparison to other softwares, um, other softwares, you manually have to code what's a fluid, what's a solid. But that's the beauty of working within SOLIDWORKS and a CAD embedded tool because the algorithm already you know, understands where there's a, a solid cell and where there's a, a cavity. Uh, we worked our way through the wizard, which really makes you know, setting up problems very easy to do and allows you to utilize uh, multiple configurations. Having a uniform method of setting up CFD a lot of times can be the stumbling block for a lot of people. Um, and having something that's very uniform and easy to set up is going to make users, you know, be able to learn the software very easily and set up projects very quickly as opposed to some of the other tools out there. Um, lastly, um, because you're working in the CAD environment, you saw how we could define our boundary conditions uh, by just a matter of using just typical SOLIDWORKS selection commands. That's the really cool thing about this is you're still working in SOLIDWORKS, the same SOLIDWORKS commands you're familiar with in terms of cross-sectional views, uh, parametric selections you have available. So now let's jump into the actual results. Um, so let me jump into the results here. 
Um, and I've already run a couple studies. So let's first take a look at configuration A and then we'll look at configuration B. So one of the first plots I always look at is what's known as a cut plot. And the cool thing about the cut plot is it's allowed to sort of, um, let me hide this, this feature. It, it really functions by specifying a plane. So in this case, I wanna look at the cross-sectional view through the center of the plane. And I sort of see I have the front plane. Um, the other really cool thing is I have a bunch of really neat visualization options. So I can turn on vectors like you're seeing on my screen. I can turn on streamlines and I could also even turn on the mesh if I wanted to see how fine my mesh is gonna be. In our case, we're kind of concerned about our flow stream. So what our velocity is, but I could also change these parameters to pressure or density and all these other parameters, which it's really pretty neat. I can look at turbulence. I can look at viscosity. I could even look at acoustic power. Um, so a lot of parameters that, you know, whatever you're sort of designing for, you can sort of meet that. In our case, we, we're, we want to understand what's happening to this nozzle based on the valve orientation. So let's sort of zoom in on the area right here. Uh, so a couple things you'll notice, um, you sort of see some stagnation right up here. Um, you sort of have a small vortice where there's not a lot of fluid moving through the system. And then you sort of see it works its way down until it sort of reaches the bottom. Um, we also, the cool thing about this is I can understand exactly, obviously I have the legend, but I can right click and hit probe on my results and I can click at various locations just by mouse click and understand what my velocity is. So great, uh, you sort of see at these different locations what my max, you know, what my velocity values are. The other really cool thing about this is I can also create what's known as, um, let me hide these probes. I can create a max plot. So this is actually gonna scan the entire plot and tell me what my maximum velocity is. Um, so looking at the velocity, uh, I see I'm at 19 meters per second. So I saw a question in the chat. Um, so as far as simulating the actual fluid coming out, that becomes a pretty challenging thing. But the, the good question in that is looking at the spray pattern. You asked a question about the spray pattern. What we can do is we can simulate that by looking at the outlet face, what the spray pattern is gonna be. So we can actually, let me change this legend to be like 18. There you go. And let me change the max to be a little bit less. And it's a really good question here. So from a design perspective, I actually want to understand. Um, and let me zoom in. Understand the actual spray pattern right here. So what you're sort of seeing is this spray pattern is more centralizing around the point instead of being kind of a more uniform direction. And what you'll see, and when we look at configuration B, is that you have a much different spray pattern. So yes, while you cannot necessarily you know, show the fluid coming out um, of the system um, like you would in a hose, it's gonna sort of directly tell you how the fluid is moving through the system via you know, kind of the, the surface plot. And the surface plot, um, I jumped right into this. This is just a matter of clicking on a surface. So any surface I click on, it's gonna show you that fluid parameter. Um, kind of going back to the question I was just asked, one of the cool things that you can do while maybe I can't show the fluid coming out of the nozzle is I can dynamically animate what's happening to the fluid via a flow trajectory. So I can anim animate it through the entire cavity. I can't show it at the exit, but I can show it through the cavity. Um, and I can do that by just clicking on the face at the entrance and then specifying um, uh, a flow trajectory, which is an animation. Let me just adjust the scale. And you sort of see how easy it is to change the scale. I'm doing this all in real time. It's just a matter of clicking on the legend and there's, you can either type in the values or let SOLIDWORKS automatically size it for you. So one of the cool things I can see right here is I directly see kind of what's happening. I sort of see the fluid kind of circulating up and then working its way out into our, until it reaches that maximum. Okay, great. So at this point, I've already set this study up. I kind of know, all right, I know the flow pattern. Great. I know the velocity. Um, but, and then this is probably going to, what this, this is going to allow, it's going to allow a velocity coming out at a pretty quick speed. How is the different valve configuration going to do? So let's take a look at the kind of the ease of use of SOLIDWORKS. So I've already set this study up. I've set the boundary conditions up. I set the goals and I know there's another configuration. There's configuration B. Um, 
would I have to go and redefine the whole project over again? Yeah, you could do that, but there's a really great automated feature in the fact of cloning a study. So maybe some of you guys may have utilized SOLIDWORKS FEA simulation, which actually has a clone study or a copied study. The same thing functions in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, where what I can do is I can actually right click on this study and hit clone and clone is just copying the study. But rather than being, I name this as webinar B, rather than this being set up for configuration A, I wanna have the study set up for configuration B and I could hit, hit select and specify configuration B. So the cool thing about this, it's gonna ask me, hey, do you wanna change any of the settings? I'm gonna hit no. And it sets everything up. I, I know if I go to my cross-sectional view right now, you sort of see it's the different valve position. This is corresponding to configuration B, but my boundary conditions have already been defined. My mesh has already been, settings have already been set. So all I'd have to do now is just run the study. Um, and I've already set my study up to be run and we can take a look at results. So thinking about that, if you guys can imagine, if you have different you know, design configurations, you can actually sketch these out, create your one flow study and just clone it and really iterate very, very quickly and efficiently. I think that's one of the really cool things about this, as opposed to if you'd actually go to physical testing where you'd have to build a bunch of different prototypes of your hose nozzles and test them to sort of see what's happening. Also, being able to visualize that is very, very difficult to do in real life testing versus you saw in our results, I could probe and identify different locations. All right, so let's go to my cut plot for, for, for B. Let me adjust my legend again. Just rescale it. And what you're, you're, you're seeing right here, kind of what we probably expected, but definitely still very interesting. So let's zoom in on the area. Is because the valve is so much closer, there's not enough water to squeeze through. Uh, what happens is you sort of see the flow pattern changes. You actually have a max velocity sort of, you know, sort of happening right here at the surface. And it's actually less than the previous system, which was at 19 meters per second. But one of the key things I want to point out with this system is if I actually go to the surface plot at the exit. So again, this is showing you as the water is leaving the system. Let's actually adjust this scale. We're at 17 as the max. 15. What you're seeing right here is a much more even distribution. So again, from a actual design based perspective in terms of changing that valve. This is what you'd want as a, a garden hose nozzle designer. How does the, these different orientations change the spray um, orientation? And you sort of see directly what's happening to these values. Um, another thing I just want to point out is I've been showing everything for velocity, but let's just sort of change, you know, just give you an understanding. Very easy to change these values on the fly. I can change my pressure value. And I can just change my orientation, you know, just different values I can change. I can change the velocity in the X direction or the Z direction or the Y direction. Again, it just illustrates to you directly, you know, things that are very hard to capture in real life testing, what directly is happening to the fluid in terms of the Y, X and Z velocities. The other thing to point out is every parameter I've showed you can be saved, you know, saved or exported out. So I could save these as, you know, bitmap, JPEGs, you know, whatever traditional visual format you're looking at. But also I could save these as eDrawings files. So eDrawings is a SOLIDWORKS viewer. And the advantage of an eDrawings file is it actually allows you to save an image and you can move your mouse around and 3D dynamically pan what's happening in the system. Um, the other really cool thing about this is any of the animations. So if I hop back to configuration A with that flow trajectory animation I created, I can save this out. And the cool thing about this animation is I can sort of adjust my frame rate um, and have a much smoother sort of frame rate and sort of save those animations out, which is great. Um, the final thing I'll point out is there's a really cool automated report feature. So again, just again, speaking to the ease of use is SOLIDWORKS has an automated report. And why this is useful is all of you guys are probably have been doing design reviews. And maybe you might have one or two engineers maybe running flow sim, but you need to sort of explain your information. There's an automated report feature, and this is the pre-installed template where you can actually change your template to maybe be your own company stationary reporting. And that, the great thing about this, it's gonna tell you directly the machine it was run on, what time it was run at, 
and all the mesh settings you utilized as well as the results. So it's a really quick way of automating your system and these templates can be can customized. So with custom images, you know, custom results plots, everything you'd want, you can customize it accordingly. Again, it's just a really great way of automating and um, expediting your sort of results and iteration process. All right, so let's hop back into PowerPoint. So some of these results advantages, obviously this is the tip of the iceberg. It's a short webinar um, and these are just kind of just an overview. But the first thing is you really can vi usually visualize results across all planes and surfaces in a model. So we talked about the cut plot going by a, uh, a, a cross sectional plot of a plane, but you could also go by the surface plot where we actually clicked on that, that end lid of where uh, the fluid was exiting the nozzle. And we could sort of see the difference in between configuration and configuration a and configuration B. Configuration A, which is what you're seeing on the screen right here, had a much higher velocity at exit, but its flow pattern wasn't as sort of uniform or distributed across. Flow B, which had the valve up closer, had a much smaller velocity. It was at like 17 at the exit as opposed to 19 meters per second, but it had a more uniform flow distribution. So it really helps you identify quickly what's happening in your system. Lastly, you sort of saw that all results could be easily exported in a variety of formats. So whatever formats you're working in, it can export. You can export whatever plot individually, or you could sum up all of those plots into a nice report as you saw. So our final conclusions. Um, when you look at flow, SolidWorks flow simulation, I think really the thing I want to bring up bring up is just how easy it is to use versus other CFD tools out there. And the beauty of this is because you're working within SOLIDWORKS, you can really make your design configurations or design your part, and then just hop into flow simulation and really run those, those problems as you're designing and make changes. You saw the advantage of changing those configurations. You could make changes and maybe you saw, maybe it was an, an, an inadequate result, and maybe I had to go back and maybe change the diameter right here and then run. You can do that very, very quickly. And as a result, it's a lot cheaper than if you'd actually go to field testing or you know, actual wind tunnel testing or, or, or actual uh, prototype testing, and also allows you to visualize these things a lot clearer than you would actually in the field. The last thing I'll point out is uh, it's a common question. SOLIDWORKS flow simulation actually utilizes the flow FLD code. Um, this is a CFD code that's actually been around since the 90s, um, early 90s. Mentor Graphics actually developed the CFD code and SOLIDWORKS implemented it. So this code has been benchmarked for over 30 years, and it really is one of the, the industry leaders in terms of accuracy. So not only is it easy to use, but it's also very powerful and accurate. Um, so it's really going to allow you to get your iterations and get you quicker to market. So that kind of brings us to the end. 